Tip Tut. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tip Tut. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at creating, uh, recreating rather, a low poly effect um, out of an original photograph in Photoshop. Uh, it's actually really simple to do. It's a bit of a long way in a process, um, but uh, that's kind of what you get. It's, there's no way around it. You've just got to do it. Um, I'm going to do something a bit different to what you saw in the thumbnail, too. I'm actually going to mirror this one because I've seen some people do that, and it actually looks really, really good. So, um, first thing to do is create a square. Uh, and choose which part you want to create into the low poly piece of artwork um, and then basically frame your work so you're ready to go. You can probably hear Phoebe knocking her food tower over there in the background. I'm sorry about that, that's my cat. She's horrendous. Okay, double click your background layer, press enter, that unlocks it and then hit control J or control, command J on a Mac to duplicate the layer. And this means you've got a clear untouched version underneath in case you mess up too badly because this is a destructive process. Okay, so now the first thing you wanna do is zoom in and uh, if you go to your marquee, uh, sorry, your lasso tool and hold down and make sure you're on poly, poly oh, fucking hell today, Jesus. Polygonal or polygonal uh, lasso tool, not the basic lasso tool um, because then what you can do is just click at the points where you want your polygon to be and it creates that marquee for you. Yes, I'm aware of select and mask. I don't want to do it. So the first thing you want to do is uh, define the outline of uh, your artwork. So say, for example, you know you want the outline to be nice and jagged. Not too many points because the whole point is it's like a low poly alternative but don't at the same time don't be afraid to include some points uh, that you think are important just because you think oh it needs to have maybe three or four polygons per side that's not really how it works you can have as many as you like um but it looks best when it's kind of even now i'm just going to cut out the whole thing um, but we're actually only going to fill out half of this and then we're going to mirror it and i'm going to show you how that works so once you've created your outline you just hit Control shift i that uh, inverts your selection then just hit delete it's gonna look like it's done nothing because you've got this visible layer underneath but when you get rid of that you've now got a low poly outline of your work looks a bit shit at the moment like somebody's cut out uh, the photoshop and done a really poor job of it um, but i promise you it will look better soon so let's get started first thing i'm gonna do i find um is to select your whole layer with control and then click on the thumbnail and that basically gives you a marquee of the whole layer. Then if you hold alt, find the middle of your image, the visual center rather, doesn't have to be perfectly center, and let go and that basically gives you um, half of your image. Now if you hit control shift I again, that gives you the inverse and delete, you're left with half an image. Now this is what you wanna work on because we're gonna mirror it to get that really nice symmetrical low poly effect. So now you're, you're ready to start the pollinization, polarization, polarization process. Making it into polygons, that's what you're ready to start doing. <laughs> so you can see here where your points are, you basically want to stick to triangles as much as possible. So choose three points of your image until you get a triangle marquee tool. Then go up here to filter, blur, average, and click that. And what that does is it takes the average color from this uh, selection and basically everywhere where there was a pixel before, it replaces it with that color. Then if you hit control D, um, you can just move on. Now, the good thing about this, doing it this way, is when you go up to the filter, you've got control F, which does your last process. You don't need to go to filter, blur, average every single time. All you need to do is select a new polygon, say something like that, and hit control F or command F, and it creates the average. Then control D and you deselect it. It is as simple as that. Now, all you really wanna do is keep going through your artwork, creating new triangles with an average each time you go, making sure to do different sizes. That way you'll get a good combination of different colors. Now you can see I messed up a bit there. I didn't uh, exactly cover over everything. So don't be afraid to go over a bit if you need to. Um, and that way it'll help get a nice distinction of colors as well. As you can see already on this one, they're starting to be a bit similar, but with enough distinction, you can see. So then really the whole step is to just go through your entire piece of artwork um, like so, creating these polygons. You don't have to stick to three sides, you can have four. Say for example here, maybe I wanted to do something a bit more complicated. We could have maybe that whole section as one color and average that, give us a nice brown because it's got all those reds in there. Um, then basically you just want to keep going. So I'm going to fast forward through this bit because you don't need me to watch me do the same thing a billion times. Um, and I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, hello everybody, welcome back. Um, cool, so I've done it, I've made polygons over the whole thing. I find usually that it's good to vary in size, to so have some really big ones and some really little ones where you want more detail. It helps make the, keep the image looking interesting. You know, if they're all the same size, it'd be super boring. Um, so the only other step now is to just hit Control J or Command J on a Mac to duplicate that layer um, and then just hit image, uh, sorry, edit, uh, transform, flip horizontal. And that gives you um, a direct copy. And then if you just align that together, you get this really cool symmetry kind of folded paper polygon effect thing. That's about as close as it is I can describe it. Um, and then of course another last thing to do is to give it a nice coloured background. Simple. There you go. Um, I hope you found that useful. It was certainly fun. I love this. It looks great. Um, uh, yeah, great. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and like and comment and all these things. And if you didn't, then that's fine too. I mean, have a good time. I hope you have a lovely evening doing whatever you're doing. I'll see you next time, everyone. Goodbye. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.